Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 68 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're teaching your Raspberry Pi who's boss. What I will need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of video lessons. And in this class, we will be using the Raphael kit for Raspberry Pi. Now, most of you guys probably already have your gear, but if you don't, take a look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon. You can hop on over there and pick your kit up. And believe me, your life and my life are going to be a whole lot easier if we are working on identical hardware. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my solution to the homework assignment that I gave you in lesson number 66. So let me start by asking how many of you guys were successful? If you were successful, leave a comment down below. I am legend, double chest bump. <clears throat> and if you were not successful, leave a comment. I fold it up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair, okay? And I hope you guys are still posting your homework solutions to YouTube. I do go in, I do look at every single homework that you guys post. I enjoy seeing how you guys are doing and see how you are learning. But this is what the homework assignment was. Let me get out of your way. <clears throat> and let me switch over here to our overhead view. And so what the homework assignment was, was to take the capacitive touch sensor and to use that to control the RGB LED. And what the assignment was, the assignment was that if you come in and touch the sensor, it turns the LED red. If you touch it again, it turns it green. If you touch it again, it turns it blue. If you touch it again, it turns off and then it cycles through that sequence every time you touch it. And so this should have been pretty easy because I've already shown you how to hook up and use the sensor and how to code that up. So really it was more just thinking about the algorithm and the strategy of having it step through those different states. Okay. And hopefully you guys were able to do it because we've been doing problems like this in so several lessons and so hopefully this is review and just something that is getting uh, something that you're getting a little bit more comfortable with. But let me go to the overhead view and let me get rid of last week's program. Sorry about that. <clears throat> and then let's jump in and let's start seeing if we can code this thing up. Okay, so first of all, some pretty straightforward bookkeeping things. We're going to be using the GPIO pen. So I'm going to say import rp little i dot GPIO as GPIO like that. I'm going to put a delay in, so I'm going to go ahead and import time. And then we need to go ahead and tell it that we're using the BCM numbering scheme. So I'm going to say GPIO.set mode. And what mode are we using? We're using GPIO.bc. Uh, <clears throat> B, C, B, C, M, like that. And the reason is, is that this breakout board that's connected to the Raspberry Pi, it is labeled in the BCM numbering scheme. And since the label's already there, if we use that, it makes it a lot easier to set our pins up. So hopefully that makes sense. <clears throat> so now we've got that set up. Now we have the touch pin is connected to pin 17. So let me go ahead and kind of tell you how I've got this hooked up. This uh, this uh, touch sensor, it's got three leads. When they're pointed away from you, they're labeled. The lead on the left is the signal pin. And I bring that over here to GPIO pin 17. And so that's gonna be my touch pin. And then <clears throat> the center pin is VCC. And I bring that over to 3.3 volts. And then the rightmost pin is ground. <clears throat> and I bring that over to ground. Now you can also see that I have, let me go ahead and just zoom in on that so you can get a little bit clearer view of it. You can see that I've got my RGB LED. I'm going through 330 ohm resistors and then the red leg of the LED, that is that left leg that when you have the long leg 
the second one over. Then the left leg is going to be your red leg. And I've got that connected to, <clears throat> I have that connected to GPIO pin 5 over here. And then I've got the next pin, the long going ground, hooked to gr the ground rail up here. And over here, this wire, this ground makes that the ground rail. So you can see this ground pin goes and establishes the ground rail. And then that ground rail comes over and connects to the long leg of the LED. Now the next pin over is the green channel. <clears throat> green channel 330 ohm current limiting resistor and then it comes over to the BCM GPIO pin 13 and then finally the blue leg the one on the right goes through the 330 ohm resistor and then it comes over to pin 19. So RGB pins are pin 5, 13, and 19 and then my touch pin is pin 17. So hopefully that's pretty clear. I didn't want to drop a schematic because you guys should at this point know how to hook up an RGB LED. Okay so my touch pin is 17. <clears throat> now I need to go ahead and make that an input. So I'm going to say gpio.setup. My gpio.setup I'm going to say touch pin and what do I want that to be? GPIO. It is an input because I'm going to be reading from it. All right. Now I also need to keep track of the button state. That is whether I'm touching it or not. And so the button state is going to be initialized at zero because when you first run the program, it has never been touched yet. And then I need to keep the button state old and we'll set that up because if it's never been touched then last time it wasn't touched either and so both of those are set up as zero. Now I've shown these toggle type concepts a lot and so you gotta if you want to operate on a toggle you have to keep track of where you are now. Are you touching it now or uh, have you touched it in uh, the last time around? So am I touching it now? Was it touched the last time through the loop? So that's the present button state, but state, and the old button state, but state old. Okay, hopefully that makes clear uh, is clear to you. Now I need to go ahead and set up those LED pins. Or I need to do one other thing. I need to set up an index, okay? And so I'm just going to set up the index to zero. Index, okay, I'm going to set that to zero. What is the index? Well, it kind of keeps track of where we are in the setup. Okay, we're going to start with things being off, and so that would be state zero, and then we would go to the next state, or the next index would be, sorry, let me put it this way. What states are we going to be in? We are going to be in off, red, green, blue four states, so we need to have four indexes. I could be in the index 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, I could be in those four states, 0, 1, 2, 3, like that. If, I, if the index is 0, that means I'm off. If the index is 1, that means I'm red. If the index is 2, that means I'm green. If the index is uh, 3, that means I'm blue. And so that is going to be off, red, green, blue, off, red, green, blue. And that is the sequence off, red, green, blue. And that's going to be the sequence index 0, 1, 2, 3. So this is going to keep track of where we are. Now in the past, it would either kind of like be on or off. But now I've got four states I've got to keep track of. So instead of just having an off flag, I need to have an integer flag that will go from 0 to 3. OK, now I know I talk a lot, but I want you to not just copy what I'm doing. I want you to think through it with me. Now let's go ahead and set up our pin. So I'm going to say the red pin and we said that was connected to pin 5 and then the green pin was connected to BCM pin 13 and then the blue pin is going to be connected to the PCM <coughs> GPIO pin 19. Okay, now we need to go ahead and set those up. And so let me uh, let me get ready to set those things up. <clears throat> so we'll come in and I'm going to say GPIO G. Did I do that? Yeah, GPIO dot set dot set up like that. And then what I'm going to set up the red pin, and that is going to be a GPIO dot out. That's going to be an output pin. All right. And now I'm going to copy and paste that because the other ones will be very similar. So I'm going to paste and paste and that's going to be the red pin, the 
green pin and the orange pin. Ah, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Red, green, blue. Okay. So those are going to be our three setup pins. And so that looks pretty good. Now I need to go ahead and you know how I was saying this index is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3. And that's going to correspond to off, red, green, blue. Okay. And so now what I need to do is I need to go in and I need to kind of define what those different states are. And so I'm going to start in. I'm going to start in index zero and I'm going to start with everything off. Well, then where do I want to go from there? Where do I want to go from there? And so I'm going to set up an array called LED states. Okay, LED states. And I am going to make that equal to a list. Now, what is the first state? The first state that I would go into, I start off, the first state I would go into would be red. Well, for red, I would want the red pin turned on, one. I would want the green pin turned off, zero. And I would want the blue pin turned off, zero. Okay, so that first index that I would go to would be the state one, zero, zero, which would be red on, green off, blue off. Well, then after that, oh, that was not good. All that typing I did and I erased it. Okay, there it is. Okay, so now the next state that I would want to go to would be what? Green. So that would be red would be zero and then green would be one and then blue would be one. Uh, blue would be zero. Okay. And then <clears throat> the final state, and notice that these are arrays inside of an array, then the final state would be what? It would be blue. So red is zero, and then green is zero, and then blue is going to be one, and then close that color, close that color, and then close the whole array. And so I'm going to be, ooh, but then there's still, I would go back to what? Then I would go back to off. So that would be zero comma zero comma zero like that. Close the color and then close the whole array. <clears throat> so the first color I go to with the first button push will be this one. And then with the next sensor touch, I said button push. I should have said sensor touch. The next sensor touch will go to green. The next sensor touch will go to blue. And then the next sensor touch will go to off. And then what do I want to do? I want to loop back around. So if I get all the way up to my index being equal to three, right? Zero, one, two, three. If the index is three, then what do I want to do? I want to reset it back to zero. So then the next time I would go to red. And so this is red, green, blue, off, and then back to red. So I've got to remember to reset that index when it gets to three. So it'll go back and start over again and repeat things. Okay. <clears throat> so that is the sequence of colors that I am going to toggle through. And now what else do I need to do? I need to go ahead and I need to set up my GPIO pins as outputs. I already did that, didn't I? Yeah, I already did that. So yeah, I set those up as outputs already. And then I have uh, set up their values. And so now what I want to do is I want to start by turning everything off. So I'm going to say GPIO dot outputs. And then I could say red pin and set it to zero, green pin set it to zero, blue pin set it to zero. I could do all of those, but I don't I can do them all at once. I can just say LED pins. And what will that do? I haven't set up my LED pins yet. So I need to set up <clears throat> an array here called LED pins. And that is going to be equal to an array that has the pin number. So that's going to be pin 5, pin 13. Uh, I'm going to do it better than that. I'm going to say red pin, which is 5, green pin, which is 13, and blue pin, which is 19. So now I've got an array 
that has my pins in it. And what that allows me to do is down here, instead of having to make three output statements where I would turn every one of those off, I can just set the whole thing. The whole thing is LED pins, and I can set that whole thing to uh, the first one, which would be red pin. I'm gonna set it to zero. The second one, which would be green pin, I'm gonna set it to zero. And the third one, which is gonna be blue pin, I'm gonna to set to zero, okay? So that would turn everything off. And then I need to close the uh, output. So let's just see here if I run this, I think that if I run this, that nothing should happen, but it shouldn't crash. And it did crash. Oh no, I, I don't think it actually crashed. I think it's just warning me <clears throat> that the channels are already in use. I'm just gonna try a quick thing here. What if I said a one there and then I run it and yeah, you see, turn green. I'm just making sure this is behaving the way I wanted. And then if I do this, it should turn red. Okay, yeah, that looks good. And then I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna do what I want, which is I want them all off, okay? Now, <clears throat> all of this annoying behavior where it's giving me warnings, you see I set up the GPIO pins and then I stop the program. Well, the GPIO pins are still set up. And so what, I, what you wanna do is you wanna cleanly release that. And I'm gonna show you how to fix that. What we're gonna do is a try, which means try to do the following thing. And then we're gonna try to do the following thing and we'll fill in what the fo following thing is. But then we're gonna come down here and say, accept. So you're gonna try it, and then if it does, if you're gonna try it, if it works, it'll do, it'll do it, and then if it doesn't work, it'll go to accept, and it will be accept on a keyboard interrupt like that, and on a keyboard interrupt, then what do you want to do? GPIO dot clean up like that. Okay, so what it's gonna do is it's gonna sit here. And then inside of the try, I will put my while true loop. I hope this isn't getting confusing. All right. So it's gonna try and it's gonna do the while loop forever until I give a keyboard interrupt, which is a control C. And then it is going to break out of the while and break out of the try. And it's gonna come down to the keyboard interrupt. And then it's going to release the GPIO pin. So it's a try and then it's an accept. When you do the keyboard interrupt, it will clean up the GPIO pins. And then let's just see if this works. I'm just gonna pass there. And so now when I run it, it gives me the warning because from the last time they were still tied up. Now I'm gonna do control C, I ended cleanly. And now when I run, magic, I don't get those errors and I hate those annoying error messages. So we've taken care of that and you've learned a little bit about doing a try and accept. But now let's get back to our main business at hand and what are we gonna do here to do this toggle? Well, you can imagine the first thing that we need to do is we need to see has the button been pressed or is the button being pressed? I'm gonna say but state and it's really a sensor it's not a it's a capacitive sensor it's not a button so i'm going to call it but state though and that is going to be equal to gpio dot input we're just going to read from it read from what read from the touch pin okay if the sensor is being touched it'll return a one if it's not being touched it will return a zero and let's just make sure that works i like to just check things as i go and so let's do this we will come in we will run it Okay, 17, that is absolute nonsense. What, what on earth, how on earth? Oh, I printed touch pen, I'm sorry. But state, that one really, that one really confused me. Now I control C for a clean exit, control C. Okay, and now we'll come in and run it. And now we're getting a zero and then I press it. And it's, okay, yeah, let me get it, okay, zero. Press, you know, one. And the problem is I'm not putting any delay in there. So I need to do a time.sleep, 0.1, like that. Now I will control C to cleanly exit. Now I'm gonna run it. Okay, now I'm getting zeros. 
I'm getting ones, zeros, ones. You don't want to read those GPIO pins too quickly. So you see just a little bit of a delay. Now that part of it <clears throat> is working quite nicely. Control C to get out of it. So now, what do I want to know? I want to know, first of all, has it been pressed and released? Have I touched it and untouched it? Have I touched it and untouched it? Well, in order to do that, what I would want to say is if but state equal equals zero, that means right now it is not being t touched, and but state old equal equal one. So that's saying the last time through the loop it was being touched and this time through it's not being touched. That means I've had an event. I've had a touch event. Touching, untouching, the event has happened. And then in that case, what do I want to do? Well, I just better before I do anything else, I'm going to unindent outside of the outside of the if statement. And remember that at the end of the loop, I need to make but state old equal but state. That meaning that the next time through, my present value is going to be the old value. And I like to do this right now, or it's a very easy thing to forget to do. And now I'll come back up and continue inside of my if statement. Okay, so the first thing that I need to do is I need to go ahead and I need to kind of keep track of that index, right? So where does our index start? It starts at zero, meaning that when we start off, uh, when we start out, everything over here is going to be off. So index zero means everything is going to be off. And so what I want to do is I just want to go ahead and now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to print, uh, I'm going to print LED, LED states of index because I just want you to get comfortable with how this is working. So we've got the LED states, which is 100, 010, 001, and 000, okay? And so I'm going to print it like that. So initially it's not going to print anything because it's starting out off. After I press and release, then it is going to print what? Well, the first time the index is going to be zero. And so it should then print one zero zero, meaning we want to go to the red state. All right. So let's just see if that works. Let's come in and let's print it. So uh, uh, and let me take that print out because that's just going to be a nuisance thing there. And so I'm going to come and take that print out. Remember to control C. If you use this little button, it doesn't, it's not a keyboard interrupt, and then you'll get that warning message again, which annoys me. So we'll do this. <clears throat> Let me make sure that I press that. Okay, yeah. So now it is running. Nothing has happened. Why? Because the button has or the sensor hasn't been pressed. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to press still nothing. And then when I release, it says we have now gone to the state 100 which should be red. Now we haven't applied the 100 yet, right? So the LED doesn't come on, but we just want to make sure if we can toggle through our states. And so now if I come in, nothing else happens. Why? Because I didn't change the index. So what I want to do down here is after I print that, what I want to do is now I want to say index equal index plus one. We want to go to the next state, right? Which the next state was red. And so now the index is equal to index plus one. Now we also have to remember if index is greater than or equal to four, then what do you want to do? You want to go back to zero. So if it gets to four, you want to go back to zero because what? Zero, one, two, right? Zero, one, two, three. Okay, so you don't want it to get bigger than three because that's four states. So if you've gotten to the number four, you've gone too far. I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so if index is greater than or equal to four, we what? Loop back around index equal zero. 
All right. And so if index is three, we're okay because this is the zero, the one, the two, the three. So if it's three, it's okay. But if it tries to come out here to four, we force it back to zero. Okay. That doesn't make sense. Think about it a little bit and that should be zero. Right. So now I think we should have some toggling action going. Okay. So we're going to come over here and we've got red, green, blue, and then we've got off, red, green, blue, off. Does that make sense now? Okay. Now the one thing that might be a little bit confusing is this really represents the state that we're going to because we start out where we start out with the device off and then we go to at the button press we go to what we go to red and then we go to green and then we go to blue and then we go to off and then it's going to index past this and force back to zero and so it'll just go boom 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 and then boom 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 with each uh, with each button push okay <clears throat> think about it it's always a little confusing because like, you know, zero, one, two, three is four numbers. So you got you got to kind of think about that. That starting to count at zero has always been something you got to pause and think about. But that is working. And you see, really, this is the kind of program control. This is the hardest part of it is getting this part done. That was really the hardest part of it. So now I'm going to control C out of that. Now, what do I need to do? Now I just need to take, I just need to take this LED states of index and I need to apply it to the GPIO pins. Okay. Now what I could do is I could say GPIO dot output of red pin and then GPIO output of green pin and then GPIO output of blue pin <coughs> and set them to a zero or a one zero zero or a zero one zero or a zero zero one. I could have three GPIO output statements or I could do it all at the same time by doing GPIO dot output and then where do I want to output to the LED pins? I want to output to the whole array, the whole array of LED pins, which is red pin, green pin, and blue pin. So I'm putting all of these in one output statement. Well, if I'm going to put them all in one output statement, I better, I've got three pins. I better give, uh, I better give each one the right number, right? So I'm going to output <coughs> to the LED pins. And then what do I want to output? I need to output the LED states, but not all of them, just of the index. Okay, like that. Now, what is the LED states of index? That is this. Okay, so what this would be is LED states of index. That is one line. That is one line. And that one line has three numbers. And so if this was where we were, then I would be outputting a zero, a one, and a zero to the red, green, and blue pin. So red would get zero, green would get one, and blue would get zero. And so we would start out at zero, 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 and then the first time we pressed it, we would be sending one, zero, zero to red, green, blue. Think through that because you really, you really got to start understanding this type of thing. Could it really be that easy that with one output statement, I could really do this? Let's look at this. Okay. No errors. That's good. No errors. Okay. Let's come in. And now what we are going to do is everyone's going to hold their breath. Giddy up. We are red. We are green. We are blue. We are off. Red, green, blue, off. Red, green, blue. I love the blue. Okay. Guys, you see how easy this is if you just think through it a little bit. And what I was doing is I kind of introduced this idea of LED states. These are the different settings for the red, 
green and blue LED to get the colors we want. Like it'd be pretty neat. What we could do is we could do instead of red, green, blue, we could do cyan. Uh, let's do magenta. Magenta would be red and blue. That's going to be magenta. And then yellow would be red and green. And so then I still need uh, cyan, right? And that would be green and blue. So this, instead of doing red, green, blue, should do cyan, magenta, and yellow. And let's see if it would really be that easy. And so I come in, and that certainly looks like magenta. That certainly looks like, uh, like uh, yellow. And then that certainly looks like cyan. So you see... I've been able to kind of change things up just by changing that array. And now I can get different uh, different colors in here. OK, guys, I think that is pretty cool. So so you can see what made this easy. This was really not very many lines of code. But what made this easy was to kind of come up with the states of the LED and then what we're doing is we, we came up with the states of the LED and then what we're doing is we're just stepping through these based on our index and our index started at zero and then uh, I'm going to turn these back. I don't like these crazy things like this. Zero, zero zero like that. Let me make sure it's working. Okay, so then what we do is we step through red, green, blue, off, red, green, blue, off, and we step through those based on this index, and that index starts at zero. Okay, the index starts at zero, and then what we are doing is we are applying to the LED pins. We're applying to the LED pins the LED states and the LED states toggle through this index and every time through I increment the index every time through I increment the index and then if it gets up to four we've gone too far and we need to set it back to zero I hope that makes sense I really really hope that makes sense and so uh, yeah that that's good. Let's run it one more time. OK, so they're red, green, blue, off, red, green, blue, off. All right. OK, guys, I'll show you a quick shot of my studio here. You can see I'm trying to keep things uh, neat. You see, I'm kind of making my uh, Raspberry Pi Pico W lessons at the same time that I'm doing the Raspberry Pi lesson. So I got some cool stuff coming up on the Pico lessons. Hope you guys are enjoying that class as well. And then uh, basically I just try to keep things kind of neat in here. And every once in a while I like to show you what I have going on. But we will go on back over to the Riverview to kind of sign off here. Guys, I really hope you're having as much fun taking these classes as I am making them. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give us a thumbs up. Up. and you can help us with the old YouTube juice if you'll leave a comment down below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, make sure you do. And when you do, ring that bell so you'll get notifications when future classes drop. And as always, share this video with other people because the world needs more people doing coding and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.